Hey guys, welcome. Well, here's what here's what we're going to make in this video. But I wanted to start out by telling you this is going to be a little different than the one you see in the video. Not very much. But what I did is I finished it and I took it in and showed it to my wife. And she didn't like something on it. And right here I had a finial about that tall. About that tall. And it had a point on it and she didn't like that. So what I did is I brought it back out here, I cut it off, and I found me a jewel to go in there and put it in there like that, and she's a happy camper. So anyway, let's get on with making this. Well, the pictures you see in here of this will have that finial in it. I just wanted you to know this was an after-the-fact change. Catch you later. Well, I'm uh, back up and around a little bit. I say figure I'm probably about 56% of normal. Of course, normal for me is about 75. So i got a little ways to go. Uh, I can tell it when I walk that it was injured, but it's uh, overall it's pr pretty good, pretty good. It's been six weeks today, and a long six weeks, my friend. Anyway, I'm going. I'm going to start a new project today. Maybe slow, uh, slower than I, I normally would, which isn't real fast anyway. But uh, I'm in here in my office, and I use part of my office. Well, it used to be my office. I don't do anything office-wise anymore. But uh, on this end down here, I've got, you know, some shelves, and I, I, keep, I keep some wood down here, and, you know, this is in the weather. And I've got a ceiling fan going in here 24-7, so, you know, it sort of acts like a drying chamber of sorts. But anyway, here's what I'm going to make. I'm going to attempt to make. I'm going to bring it up here close to you. I don't know what it's called. Maybe somebody can tell me what you want to call it. Uh, get over here where... Not in the, the light's not any good in here. I'm trying to improvise, but it's going to be like uh, three platters or dishes, one, two, three, with a, a single shaft going up through the center. Some sort of cake, cake candy dish or something like that. And I don't even know what kind of wood. And it may not even end up being that way because you know how it goes with with this particular hobby. The wood tells you what you're going to make. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go through my wood right here, and what I'm going to try to find is uh, where I can get three pieces, you know, out of the same kind of wood that, uh, you know, I can make those three. And maybe I, maybe I won't find three. Maybe I'll have, you know, something like, you know, maybe persimmon in one and honey locust in another and cherry in another. Who knows, you know, well, whatever it turns out to be, I'm, I'm sure it'll be okay. I'll go over here and... Uh, Get a little closer to it. I'll take this off the tripod so we can look around a little bit. There you go. Yeah, this is uh, it's definitely a mess in here. There's all my bowls and stuff on the wall. Come down here. I'm also a uh, federal firearms dealer, so I've got a safe in here with some of my trophies and so forth. So, you know. I could use it for an office, but I don't have a need for one. Anyway, so I'm going to start, brought my stool in here because I need to, sometimes I need to sit down. But there's uh, just all kinds of wood in there. I think that's a piece of cherry right there in the center. And there may be more. This may, I may end up making this out of cherry. I'm not a fan of cherry because cherry is really bad about cracking. Uh, I'd really like to find some, some honey locusts in here somewhere that I can get three of. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through all this mess right here. And when I get them all picked out, I'll, I'll meet you at the lathe. All right, here's what I come up with. <clears throat> Both of these are honey locusts. I can get um, two out of this one. I'm going to come in here. Oh, let's see. That's almost four, so I'm going to come here about an inch and three quarters. And on the bandsaw, cut me two out of that one. And it's pretty flat, uh, and I will get the other one out of this. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. Gives me enough room to work. Not even that even leave enough for a, a shallow bowl of some sort. <clears throat> this is whatever. I don't really know what it is. I'm thinking it's dogwood. But I, I didn't have any. That's honey locust incidentally. I didn't have any honey locusts and small stuff. So I think this will work good for my, my center shaft. 
They ought to be just about the right size. So I'm going to go to the bandsaw and get these sliced and uh, circled and cut off, and then I'm going in for the day. All right, there they are. I'm 100% sure this is uh, honey locust. I mean, it does it does look like it when you get out here, but it doesn't have this pattern in it. Look at this. Some this I'm not sure. I'm just not sure, guys. Maybe not. It's just a different part of it. It does. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this to the round first. Uh, there's a method to my madness. I want to get. Uh, I want to get this in to a certain size that will fit into my first plate. So you know, so I can glue them together. Now I've already drilled the one inch Forster bit hole. I always do that when I turn between centers. It just is a very good safety thing to do. And on the other end, I always drill a hole there to fit in my, excuse me, my live center. There again, it's a safety thing to me. I, you know, during my career doing this, I've had a few come out. And I've never had one come out doing this. Never, ever. But when I used to put this right on the end and that right on the end, Sometimes the wood moves and shrinks and you're not paying attention or, or this loses its grip and spins, you're in trouble. So I just don't do it that way. Gets hard to back this up just a hair. So I'll put it right on that hole and then I'll put this into here. Probably not quite centered, but it'll be all right. There you go. You'll find its own place in a minute. There you go, because it's spring loaded. And as usual, you, what you want to do is bring this up to here. Hold on to your hand wheel and make sure that you can't turn it. Lock this in. And uh, there you go. Go ahead and turn it up to a thousand. that later if I need to. See right there, that's, that's going to go into the, the bottom plate. Glued in. And then I will take this and, you know, do whatever. Make a place for the other plate and the other plate and like a finial on the end. That's the plan. So I'm going to set this aside now. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, get that bottom plate ready to go. I'm going to be using a worm screw. And all right, I've got the, uh, the bottom plate on. It's on a worm screw. It appears to be good and tight. Normally, I'm not a fan of worm screw, but I'm going to try it today. First thing I'm going to do is get, get the bottom straightened out, and I'll come around the side.
little bit of sand in here. We'll start with 180. Yeah, see, it actually looks pretty good. A little flat right here. Where would that come from? It's a misty. Yeah. That's okay. Better turn on this. To tomorrow, I'll just head out and then I'll start working on my next plate. It'll be about right here, and another one will be here, and that'll be like a finial. But that makes sure it's nice and straight, and I'll actually turn it right here like this. All right, I'm going to. Uh, this is the next morning. I'm gonna come in here and clean this up and finish hauling this out. Then we'll decide what distances I want the other two plates. And we'll go from there. There's a little bit of cedar here. <clears throat> a lot of cedar. Give it a few minutes and I'll uh, 
hit it again, then I think I'll be done for the day. Well, good morning to you. Well, I've got this one, the first one. Uh, two coats of sealer, men wax sanding sealer, water based, and they've been sanded and still wool. So now I'm ready to take this off and start working on my second plate. And first, I'm going to saw this one in two right there because that's going to go into the bottom of my second plate and this will go into the top of it. And the same thing will happen on the third one. And then, then I'll make a finial out of that. That's the plan, man. So let's see what we got here. All right, we're in business, maybe. Guess I can back this off and probably would get no blood. Oh, there you go. So hang on to this one for a little while. Get that off and start on my second plate. I'm normally a fan of worm screw, but they work real good in this wood because it's a good hard wood. Well, I got the second one on here and it's on a worm screw. I'm just gonna go ahead and being this, this was already almost here, I'm going to go ahead and just round this out here first before I come in here and start rounding this to uh, try, try to match this other one best I can. All right, I took this uh, second plate to drill press. Use the same forester bit and drilled it out. And now fits on there quite well. And I had to do a little judicious sanding on there, and this one will go right here like that. And I'll cut that off and make my third one. But I'm going to, instead of using wood glue, I'm going to use a little bit of thick CA on this. I found that, you know, this is some... This ain't going nowhere when this stuff sits in on you. You don't take a whole lot. Be careful that it'll uh, run on you though. Now I'm going to use just a little bit on this one. Put it in there. Just right in there is all it needs. There you go. And we put this one in the gap. Like this. We'll bring this up to here. And we will know we're good and straight and put some pretty good pressure on it. And there you go. I'll saw this one off here and basically go through the same process. Well, as usual, during the night is when I do most of my thinking because I don't sleep real good sometimes. But anyway, I just kept, this, this kept bothering me because this is not a honey locust, you know, this is cherry, and if I put it on, I'll get back over here, this is, oh, ooh, that's heavy, this is a bottom, so if I put this up here to make that, the, the third tray, it just isn't going to look right, so I decided to get me some more persimmon, I didn't, I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have any small pieces, I got, Oh, maybe four or five, you know, two foot by two foot diameter by, you know, two or three feet long. So I went out there with a chainsaw, which I probably shouldn't have done, but I found one that was already sliced down the middle. It was easy to do. So I went ahead and cut me off a piece of persimmon, not persimmon, honey locust, sorry. And uh, yeah, big difference, right? Big difference, see there? Big difference. So I went ahead and put the meter on it this morning, and it's 38% it's moisture because it's been outside. So I had had one of my subscribers ask me that next time I use a dehydrator if I would explain it just a little bit. And so I'm gonna go in there, it's, it's in the kitchen, and we're gonna put this on the dehydrator for 24 hours. Because let's take the camera and go in there and we'll do that real quick, it don't take long. All right, well here's my dehydrator. There ain't a whole lot you can say about how to do this now. Uh, this is a Magic Mill. I, I, I got it off Amazon. Oh, I don't know, maybe I've had a year and a half or so now. Best I remember is like $129. Now this one is 12 inches inside by like 14 deep. Now I didn't buy it for this. 
Had I bought it for this, I would have got the biggest one they got, and I think that's like 14 or something. I think old Tom over at Axe Pace has, has a great big one. Anyway, I bought this for making a, a venison jerky. Anyway, here's my little deal here, and it's 38% moisture. And all you do is sit it in here wherever you want. You know, I always like to put it in the middle. And then, uh, you may have to give forgive me for a second. This might be a... Okay, that's 10 hours at 165 degrees. See, I don't want that. I want, uh... There you go, 24 hours at 115 degrees. So, uh... uh that's it, man. That's all it is to it. There you go. Come back tomorrow. Now that's that's the slow one. Now this, I, I can ratchet this thing down to uh, uh, 95 degrees. I believe is all it is. Uh, let's see. Now that's the time there. Don't want to do that. Uh, I told you I didn't remember the damn thing. There you go. Now I want to go. I'm gonna go ahead. There you go. All right, that's where it's going to be. All right, it'll quit that in a second, I think. So that's 95 degrees, and well, I think maybe I need to put that. Ah, hell, it ain't going to matter. 30 minutes, I accidentally walked 30 minutes off it. It ain't going to matter, but there it is. And we'll come back tomorrow. Now, my experience has been the slower and longer, the better results you'll have. Now you can crank this thing. I've never had as high as it'll go, but it uh, becomes on the default is, is 10 hours at 165 degrees. That's they, they call that fast. Uh, my experience has been there that that it dries it, but it also cracks it pretty bad and warps it. So you need to sort of suck that moisture out of there about as slow as you can. So uh, we will come back tomorrow about about this time a little earlier, and we'll see what that looks like and put the meter on it. But that's all it is, guys. I mean, that's all it is. It's about as simple as it gets. Catch you later. Well, this is good and set up. Of course, it don't take too long using CA, but I went ahead and got this other blank out of the dehydrator. There it is. Put the meter on it. It is now 9%. From 38 to 9%, that's 24 hours at 95 degrees. Now, crack-wise, I got this one. Wait, wait a minute. Let me back up just a hair. Uh, before I went in last night, I pulled it out and put anchor seal around the outside because I was just sitting here thinking about that. So I put anchor seal around the outside. I don't know if that made a difference or not. But I got that crack and it goes down to about here. But it picks up back over here and I got a little one here. And this one here only goes to here. Now they may have been there already. I don't really know. But anyway, here's an interesting one. Look at this one. It's like that. Never saw one do quite like that before. But anyway, I'm going to get it drilled and get it on the uh, on the lathe here. After a while, I've got to get this cut off, and uh, you know, go. I'm going to drill this to drill press. I'm going to go all the way through. Might as well. I'm going to do it both sides anyway with a worm screw. So there you are. Proof of the pudding, my friends. Dehydrator does work. Slower and lower the better. But you know, you can set it. You can set it up and just go go away for a night. Or day or whatever. No need to be in a hurry, but it it definitely works. All right. So what we're going to do now? Uh, this is set up real nice and it looks good. I really, I'm pleased with it. It's really going to look good when I get that third one on there. Uh, this. Let me see here. Let's let's turn this rascal on. Let's see if we got any movement in those things last night. No, this uh, this one it had this already, but you see there, a little bit, not much. So that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm, just like I did this other one, I'm going to saw it off by a quarter inch up. Uh, set this aside and go ahead and, and turn my final plate. And then we'll do it exactly the same way. And then somehow I'll mount this and turn a finial out of this right I'm here. Sure. Turn it on. Well, I've got, got cold, y'all on the small one, and the center here. Uh, I'm not real comfortable with doing this, but I think all my things are really well glued. I've spun it up and it seems to be okay. Uh, so I'm gonna sort of take it easy. The, the problem is that uh, this is some pretty hard wood and 
You know, it takes quite a bit to cut it. So um, let's see. I'm not real sure about this. I sure would hate for it to come off and ruin all this hard work because there's a lot of work involved there. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to get it down and it'll be probably pretty rough and I'll just finish it with sandpaper, you know, with one of my uh, air grinders. It's about 400. I don't know if I can do it with 400 or not, but we'll see. that one more cut get me. Uh, I got it in here and here's where I'm lasering right here. Well, I mean it's going okay. Here's where I'm lasering. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Yeah, like this. There you go. That's what's going to burn. I'll bring you back when it's done. I got it going real slow because I want a deep burn. Oh, you know, it's probably going to be 15, 20 minutes. But meantime, we're going to go in there and turn that pin off. All right, the lasering's done. There you go. A little more light on there. Well, guys, here's a wrap. Uh, it took a little longer than normal, but uh, I guess nobody understands why. But. Uh, I think it turned out really pretty. That's honey locust. It's about 12 inches high, and uh, I believe this is a uh, S10, uh, about eight and a half and seven for each one of those. And you'll see in the bottom is you can see it's got my laser work, and I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just calling it a triple decker. So I guess it's a triple decker food rack or something like that. I don't know. It just sort of came to me one night. You know, we're all, we're always searching for something different because, you know, you just turn a bowl every day and ain't nobody gonna pay attention to that. So there's gotta be something different. This 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 honey locust is absolutely marvelous wood. It turns nice. Uh, it's really pretty, as you can see. It's a hardwood. Uh, it's not real easy turn, but it's not real hard. But anyway, there you go. I'll take a few, uh, few stills. So anyway, there you go. Uh, I'll take some stills and we'll, we'll call it off for today. I'm gonna go in and watch a little television. Uh, getting pretty good at that. Anyway, subscribe, tell your friends, and call your mom. Catch you later, alligator.